we're going to talk specifically about the value of a residual herbicide. A residual herbicide in planting as well as potentially a residual herbicide with a post-emergence uh, applications and it really doesn't matter what crop we're talking about whether it be corn uh, soybeans or cotton we're going to see the value of what a residual herbicide brings to the table for us in terms of controlling weeds like this one right here uh, that being palmer amaranth what i'm showing you here in this uh, plot area here is an area that was tilled uh, approximately six weeks ago the palmer amaranth emerged uh, after the tillage so we started clean at the beginning of the the season here we don't have a crop uh, in the uh, area that i'm looking at here at this time but what we do see is the palmer amaranth now is approximately two to two and a half feet tall and there's absolutely no option that we would have in terms of effectively controlling this weed i want to now turn and we're going to move over to an area that actually has a residual herbicide in it and we're going to look at a weak residual as well as one that's got a little bit more activity uh, on this weed in the last plot, we were looking at 24 to 30 inch pigweed that had emerged in the absence of a residual herbicide, again, approximately six weeks ago. Now I'm taking you to a plot that was sprayed with metolachlor. Here we put this out at the time, again, of establishing this test six weeks ago. And while we do see pigweed in this plot, we notice that most of the pigweed that we have here is approximately 10 inches tall. And definitely we have less pigweed than what we have in the non-treated. If we take a look at four weeks or even three weeks after application, which we'll see here in a moment, we're going to see that the pigweed is smaller and it does allow for the timely use of a post-emergence herbicide where we have a residual like metolachlor in front of the crop or maybe even a post-emergence application with our uh, post-emergence product, something like, again, a glufosinate product, dicamba or 2,4-D product, depending upon the technology. I'm now kneeling in a plot that was sprayed with peroxisulfone or Zidua at two and a half ounces uh, six weeks ago. Again, you saw what the non-treated plot looked like in terms of Palmer Amaranth size. And while we do have a good bit of pitted morning glory in this area, you do see a very highly effective herbicide in terms of Palmer Amaranth. Now, this plot is not free of Palmer Amaranth. Actually, I'm pointing uh, to Palmer Amaranth plants that have just uh, recently emerged. We're talking about a half an inch to inch size. Uh, these plants can be easily controlled with most of our post-emergence herbicides uh, that I mentioned a few moments ago. Products again like Dicamba, the Extendamax, Ingenia, uh, things like Enlist One, uh, as well as the glufosinate products depending on what technology uh, you have in the field. But the key point to make here is some products are going to provide longer residual than others. When we take a look at the length of residual, really that's a function of temperature, that's a function of moisture, it's a function again of the herbicide that we ultimately choose. But what you see in this plot is the value of choosing the correct residual herbicide and the flexibility it's going to give you with making a post-emergence application uh, in, the, in the crops in which these products are labeled. I'm standing in the area of the field where we came in with tillage four weeks ago now. And the Palmer Amaranth in this area is generally going to be about 10 to 12 inches in size. Uh, it emerged a few days or uh, maybe even a week after our tillage event. And with a plant of this size, 10 to 12 inches, again, there's absolutely nothing labeled uh, for the control of this. Uh, hence the value of using a residual herbicide. Similar to what we saw a few moments ago, I want to come now at this point and take a look at uh, metolachlor. What we're seeing here is that we've got metolachlor four weeks after a, a pre-emergence application. Uh, we see that we did control a good bit of the Palmer amaranth in the area that I'm standing. Uh, we have some probably some six inch, eight inch weeds, just meaning that you're not likely with metolachlor alone to get four weeks of high level of residual control. And one thing I will state in these plots is we do have access to irrigation. Uh, these plots were readily activated uh, as well as the fact we've had weekly rainfall events or, irrig or irrigation events to maximize the activity of this herbicide.
The last plot that I'm going to share with you today is one that involves, again, peroxisulfone or Zidua. This would be four weeks after application to, again, a bare soil. And what we notice in this plot is a high level of Palmer amaranth control. Is it free of Palmer amaranth? Absolutely not. There is no pre-emergence herbicide that's going to give you extended levels of 100% control. You're likely to have some, some escapes, but again, the escapes that we have have here, most of these escapes are going to be four inches or less, and with a timely application of a post-emergence herbicide, we should be able to control these escapes. Also what you notice is with the high level of control that we have here, yield loss from early season competition is going to be little to non-existent because of the high level of weed control that we have here. So again, tremendous value to putting the correct residual herbicide uh, under our crop or over the top of the crop uh, with our post-emergence applications, especially uh, when we're not approaching or yet to approach uh, canopy formation. I want to spend a few moments now showing you the value of a residual herbicide actually in soybean. What I have to the right are soybeans that were planted approximately five weeks ago. Uh, we see Palmer amaranth in this uh, field plot as well as uh, Johnson grass and some other grasses like la large crabgrass, barnyard grass, uh, etc. What we have here on my left is a uh, four row plot that was sprayed with trivents uh, at the time of planting. That is a very effective residual herbicide from a pre emergent standpoint. Again, is it going to provide season long control? No. We've really got to have some option post emergence uh, to provide the control of those small seedlings that come through that crop as well as the value of overlaying a residual herbicide. So what we did is approximately about five or six days ago uh, we came over the top of these soybeans with Enlist 1 as well as glufosinate or a Liberty like uh, product. We had a residual herbicide in this and hopefully we're going to have about 14 to 21 days before we need to come back one more time uh, before we go to canopy formation and likely uh, make our final application to ensure that this crop is weed free throughout the growing season. Again, we always want to thank the Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board for their support of research uh, similar to what I've covered today. And as we close, I want to remind you that I'm always available through uh, email that's going to show up uh, here in a moment as well as my uh, mobile phone that's also available. Again, thanks for your support. Look forward to seeing you next week.